All right, welcome back. Episode 163 of Chaotically Intolerant. We are back um, after a six-week hiatus. We're officially back. Uh, it was a very fun, very stressful six weeks for me. Uh, just, you know, making sure making sure the Classic runs well, making sure the whole league runs well. I did not win, but I have the championship shirt. We have way too many championship shirts. Anyone wants to buy them, just DM us. Uh, $20, something like that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, we'll ship them to you. Um, congratulations to Amanda Barrett. I'm sure we'll have her on at some point in the future just to kind of talk about it. She won the individual title and the Oakland Locomotives. Congratulations. An Oakland-based team has actually won a championship in some sort of sports league. So, you know, the fans of Oakland should be happy about that. Uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, anyone who is interested in playing, we're probably going to be hosting some daily tournaments at some local bars and in, in the floor in the Sarasota Gulf Coast area. Um, but that has not been officially confirmed yet or not, but we're going to try and do that. Just a daily tournament Friday nights, probably just have fun, drink beer, that whole type of thing. But today we're going to go over the six weeks of baseball that we have missed. A lot has happened. The Red Sox are hot. We have Caleb Williams here. Perfect timing, bringing him back on the show. Caleb, what's going on? Not much. I mean, the Sox are hot. Life's good. The Celtics just won the NBA championship. But yeah, we, we never we never did get to do – I never got to do my NBA preview right before the finals. The, the whole se- We are going to preview the whole NBA season right before the finals, but I just never got to do it. So who do you think is going to win the 2023-24 finals? What, let's, let's do it right now. Who, who do you think is winning the MVP? Because personally, I have um, – I have Luka winning the MVP this year. <laughs> I have a Slavic player from the Western Conference winning the MVP. Yeah, I probably, probably would have said Luka as well. My, my Celtic bias wants me to say Tatum, but I, I don't think he's <laughs> he's going to be an MVP. What's so, so if the Celtics win, what is the over-under on cringeworthy moments where Jason Tatum tries to force some sort of memorable, you know, just we did it, like, you know, his, his signature moment. How many times is he going to try and force it? I think he's he's probably get, taken the criticism. He's probably seen what people are saying about him. I'll, I'll, I'll lower that to probably two and a half. That's my line. <laughs> two and a half. I think I would take the over on that. Um, Instead of the four the, or five that he had this year. Yeah, it? the I th- I want He did. He did the. We did it. You know, trying to copy the Kevin Garnett. Yeah. I'm gonna say the trophy. The trophy photo is actually not bad. It wasn't bad. I actually liked it. You know. It was a good thing to have his son there. And, of course, ironically, the moment that he doesn't actually try to be iconic, that was his iconic moment, which should be a lesson to Jason, that you don't need to try to be iconic. You just do. Like, that's just what you do. Um, him lifting his kid in the air, that was the best. I think that was the best photo in my eyes. But I just I never want to see him try to recreate the Kevin Garnett thing again. I was celebrating as a Celtics fan, and I was still like, oh, my God. My favorite part is everyone knew he was going to do something like that. Everyone yep. knew he was going to do some kind of scream in the air, Kevin Garnett mm-hmm. style, and it was he he delivered with the, with the corniness. I love Jason. I, Tatum. Maybe that man is maybe that is his life. thing. Maybe maybe that's what he wants to be. Maybe he just wants to be a little corny, as that's like his character, that's his personality. So, but Jalen Brown, I think Jalen Brown deserves it more than anything. He was there the year before Tatum. Out said he was too smart to be in the NBA. That's right. Too smart to be in the NBA, but he is the NBA Finals MVP and a champion. Eric White looking like a leprechaun, especially missing his half of his tooth as well. That was that was hilarious. No, did you see him at the Red Sox game last night? He got it fixed. Yeah. Well, that was the perfect game for them to to go to the walk off. I mean, that that is literally what Boston has become it's oh you have to one us up we have to one up the next team like if one team wins all right you guys got to fucking win now that's your job and i'm sure the pressure is on the patriots the pressure has been on the bruins since 2011 to finally get it done and the especially bruins after the gotten. last two playoffs yeah well again i'm perfectly happy well i'm not happy but if you're if the bruins are going to lose to a team i would want them to lose to the eventual uh eastern conference or stanley cup champions because then you just know you run into a buzzsaw 
say that's that's a good mindset to have at least. I disagree. Fuck the Panthers. The to each their own. It's a loser mindset. I mean, obviously, I would rather just win the whole damn thing. But um, I think that title, everyone wants to hate on the Celtics, and I completely understand why Boston fans are just the most obnoxious human beings on the planet, especially coming as a Colts fan. I've hated the Patriots. But uh, that Celtics title was for every kid who watched the Isaiah Thomas teams, every kid who watched young Tatum take LeBron to seven games in, I want to say, 2018. Like that, that was just... I don't even know what to say, like, when we won that. I, I didn't pay attention to them all that much during the regular season, but watching IT against them lose 4-1 to one in the Eastern Conference Finals after, you know, and his sister dies that season, like, the whole thing was just lots of, like, very nostalgic moments. I remember when they lost to the Lakers in 2009. That was 2009. Yeah, 2009. Uh, it, hard, it was hard to not be like, wow, I can't believe it's been this long, and I went through so many moments as as a Celtics fan like that. The first thing I thought of is, is I went through where we went through Jared Selinger being the Celtics best player for like <laughs> two and a half years. That's all I can think of is wow, wow, we have a super team now, and look how far they've come. And I mean, just just thinking about the trade, how we just fleeced the Nets, completely fleeced them. We I think we kicked them out of. Jersey were they was that the year they went to Brooklyn when did they go to Brooklyn I think the first year in Brooklyn was the first year with KG and Pierce I want to say yeah so we started them we gave them literally like the worst start anyone could ever have yeah the New Jersey Nets I want to see I remember being broken the day that trade went down that was a hard one that was that was really difficult you know to to deal with but like i think now obviously we look back and we're like yeah that was 100 percent the right decision brad stevens is why would anyone do a trade? why would anyone do a trade with brad stevens right now just showing the past all, all of this stuff he's hit on in the past i, I don't understand because he just fleeced almost everybody yeah there's just no reason to to try and trade with the celtics yeah. right now and and shockingly they seem like a pretty well put together team it's going to be hard to tear them down for the next couple of years i'm not saying they're going to win the title every year but the core feels like they're going to be there for the next three four years kind of like what the warriors did i think they're going to run the east for probably the next three four years so long as they can keep jason tatum around which you saw the, yeah. the report that he was offered an extension so hopefully or he's going to be offered an extension so hopefully that gets done and just lock up the super team for the next four years five years yeah, I, I try to not be super, super like, oh, we're definitely going to win, the, you know, because that's, that's just so hard to do. Like, even going back to the finals a year after winning the finals is impossible to do, like, and that's with any sport. There's a reason Major League Baseball hasn't repeated since the 90s with the Yankees. There's a reason the NFL, this was the first time since the Patriots that the NFL has repeated. When was the last time we had a, an NHL, well, the Lightning, I guess. The last time we had an NHL repeat. But still, like, this is, it's really fucking hard to repeat, and especially at a professional level. So I don't like to do that. But if there is a team primed to run the East or run a conference or run the league, it's the Celtics team right now. Because they're one of the first teams with two wings as, like, a leader. You know, the, the two superstars with wings that aren't going to fight each other. Like that's that's a really big deal, and that could be how teams kind of change because there was the super team model that they had for a little bit, where it was one big player, and then you bring in a bunch of other little players. But the Celtics developed two big players that are kind of you could say they they are kind of equals when it comes to superstars, except you know they kind of have sort of different skill sets in in certain ways. So. Um, yeah, this Celtics team is is probably the closest thing you have and to, to the Warriors for the next few years at least, oh, yeah, which is exciting. Absolutely. And when the Celtics are good, that means the Red Sox have to be good, and the Red Sox have turned the gas on. They have absolutely turned the gas on lately. Um, they are 8-2 and two in their last 10. I think they won – did they win 11 straight games at one point? Am I crazy? Or was no, that? I think their best win streak this stretch was six. They were five. Five, but again, five they're straight wins is pretty nice. Yeah. Okay, maybe maybe that's what I heard was eleven of their last fourteen. But um, so let's just talk socks. 
just socks right now. I think you you said earlier. But, well, give me your favorite. I guess give me your most unexpected player so far. I mean, it's it's Duran. I mean, we saw a couple flashes with him last year, but it it wasn't anything like this. Like the defense was still a question mark. He he wasn't hitting for as much power. He was hitting those little singles in the gap, but he stretched into a double that helped his slugging. But this year, he's actually driving the ball. He's added the leg kick the last couple of weeks. It's added to his power numbers. Just, I think he's slugging like near 700 in the last couple of weeks since he's added that. He's leading the league in triples. He's, I think, top five in doubles. The, the, the dude's legit. Now he's hitting homers. He's, he's hit a couple of homers the last week, last two weeks. I'm completely fired up about him because he seems like a super, super really fun guy mm-hmm. on the team. I saw him up the other night. He's he's reminding me more and more of Jacoby Ellsbury. I might like him more than Ellsbury. He's I, did he tie the season a single season record for triples already with Ellsbury? He might or not not. Yeah. I don't think it's a single season like all time, but since uh, Ellsbury, he's had the most triples. I want to say. I think he's he might have passed. He's got ten. He might have passed Osbury's numbers at this point. He's, he's creeping up with like 2007 Jimmy Rollins type of numbers on triples. Yeah, he's he's absolutely killing it right now. And he also wants to play 162 games. And he's, I mean, he's got 79 and we've played 79 baseball games right now. So um, he is, he's, he's quickly becoming like the face of the Red Sox. I, I think that's pretty fair to say, like just as, a vibes guy like obviously Devers is your superstar but Jaron Duran is he seems to be like the outward facing face of this team yeah it seems like he he gets along well with a lot of the the guy I saw a lot of the mic'd up content and stuff this spring it seems like everyone kind of gets well gets along well with him he's goofy he's funny and he, the dude just balls out on the field he he doesn't he doesn't stop for anything he, that man's running through a wall he's running Legging out a double or a triple, and he's been mm-hmm. insanely fun to watch this year. I'm loving following him this year. Yeah, um, and another guy I'm gonna give for my kind of surprise Red Sox of the season, Ben Raphael. We have loved his his fielding. the The hitting was a question mark. I think all year it was it was kind of a question mark. Which you know he was getting a lot of those comparisons to to Jackie Bradley Jr. Which everyone every Red Sox fan knows Jackie Bradley was, you know. He was Jackie. He he would he was very streaky. That was the definition of his career as a hitter. Um, Rafaela is, I mean, a, a solid. I'll take two forty two from a guy who is probably your best defensive center or your best defensive player overall. He has taken over well um, at shortstop. I think for for Trevor Story because that was a real concern. How are we going to handle Trevor Story not being here again? I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I feel bad for Trevor Story, of course, but. This this has got to be one of the worst signings in Red Sox history, just just in comparison to the money and and how much he's actually played. Um, not the worst. You there there were two in twenty twenty ten, right? Twenty ten that you could point to Carl Crawford and uh, I think Pablo. It was 20, I want to say twenty twelve. Or no, Crawford. Yeah, Crawford was eleven. Pablo was a couple of years later. Twenty eleven. Yeah, yeah, twenty eleven. You know, as as you get older, it, the the time just fucks with you. That year um, it, was, it was Aegon and, and Crawford. Yeah, well, that was that was uh, Gonzalez's like resurgence, right? That was a he had a great year that year. Yeah, it was his one and a half good years in Boston. Yeah, yeah, we we signed him to a seven year, hundred and forty two million dollar contract. Biggest mistake. Of of our life, of of the Red Sox so far, uh, but yeah, Sedan so Rafaela, love it, love to see. Also, Tanner Houck. Tanner Houck is looking. He's looking at Cy Young nods right now, based on how he's pitching. Yeah, he's he's rocking a two one eight ERA. He's, he doesn't have the win loss record, but to be honest, that doesn't really matter. I mean, the whole thing with with Bailey coming in was who can. Who can Andrew Bailey turn into his Kevin Gossman or, or Logan Webb that he had in, in San Francisco? It's it's looking like it's how. The issue last year was he couldn't pitch it to a, to the third time through the lineup. He couldn't get to the sixth, seventh, and that's all he's doing now. Last night, I think he I think he came out in the seventh, but there's a whole whole situation going on. 
I mean, he's been he's been nasty. A lot of slider, splitter balls just ticked off from last year. Like last night, sorry, he was throwing the splitter 90, 91 miles an hour, which is just disgusting. And he's he's kind of figured out how to pitch and how to go deep into games, how to work work uh, his off speeds to different hitters and and give different guys different looks through the lineup. So it's been. And I hope he's the All Star Game starter. Yeah, I'm, it's it might be. Might be a stretch. Uh, I've been seeing the campaign for Mason Miller, but I, I, I'd love to see Tanner Houck start in the All Star game. Yeah, he leads the Red Sox in innings pitched right now. He leads them in wins, ERA, and strikeout. Oh, he's. I mean, it's it. If you told me that two years ago that Tanner Houck would be leading the Red Sox in in strikeouts and innings pitched and wins as a starter. I don't think I would be super shocked because I think a couple of years ago we were looking at him like, okay, this guy's the right-handed Chris Sale. If if he can, you know, progress a little more, you know, we'll we'll see some really great things out of him. But I think it's just this came kind of came out of nowhere because last year he definitely took a step back. I think as a pitcher, and this year he's just figured it out. And and that is again big thanks to Andrew Bailey for that. Um, former Red Sox, right? Am I correct yeah. about that? Yep, 2013 world champion. He threw like two games that year. But funny enough, I, I for some reason I saw something about Drew Pomerantz today, um, which if 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 Red Sox fans remember, they literally refused to put him in in game in the in the 18 inning game. He, he was the only pitcher left in the bullpen during that game, and Evaldi was going six, and they refused to pull Evaldi for. Pomerantz. I'm pretty sure They're he like, was off the not. roster for a couple of those series too. He was off the roster in the playoffs, and then they put him on in the World Series, and they just—I would have rather had anyone else because yeah, he yeah. didn't even get a—he didn't even get an inning in the World Series. Legend Drew Pomeranz, World Series. They, they did say that he was—he was their mock uh, Clayton Kershaw, though, which we did like Kershaw up in that series. So that if he—if he did that, then I'm good with him. He's a, he's a Red Sox legend that helped us win that World Series. So oh, good. Uh, good for Pomeranz. Uh, who who do you want to see on the Red Sox kind of improve themselves in the second half as we're coming up on the All-Star break? Are you talking about trade deadline or are you talking player on the team? Let's do both. Let's do one player on the team and who who do we need to acquire at the trade deadline as well? I mean, basically our trade deadline pickup is going to be Casas. I'm so excited to get him back. I, I think that Pavetta has been super inconsistent lately. He's shown flashes in the past of what, like how nasty he can be and how efficient he can be, but he's just been kind of he's gone back to his old first half of twenty twenty one self where he's like, you know what you're kind of gonna get is like a three five to four ERA, which is fine, but he's got the kind of stuff and we've seen performances where he's racking up ten and eleven twelve Ks and going six seven shutout innings. So I think if Pavetta could be more consistent and be a, a good three in this rotation that, that this pitching staff is even scarier than we think it might be yeah he he's str- i know he struggled a little bit this weekend just couldn't give us the innings that we really needed uh even though it was a win but he did struggle so who do you think we should actually acquire from outside of the team outside of the organization where do you think we need to add my my dream answer is pete alonzo i think he's on an expiring contract and I don't, I don't see the Mets contending, but you never know. They've been Grimace, hot you never know. Yeah, they, they've been hot lately with Grimace. But, uh, I won't say Pete Alonso just because that's, that's kind of Yankee fan-ish. Uh, give, give me the best player for the, the, my number 11 prospect. I like Luis Renjifo. Jeff Passan kind of floated that idea out today. I saw on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, switch hitting middle infielder. I think he's hitting three. I looked at it. I think he's hitting around 304. Couple homers, 120 WRC plus. So he's been like an efficient bat for the Angels. He's been solid, and I think that could kind of fill a little gap at second base. I know Valdez has been all right. Grissom's supposed to be the future, but who knows there? I think I think Ranjito would be a solid. Yeah, I'm good with I'm, I'm good with that. All right, so let's let's dive a little bit more into Major League Baseball and and the entire scope of baseball. But uh, yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about the East. Now the Yankees just got absolutely hammered. Um, I think we exposed a lot of their weaknesses as well in our series. Um, that was a little, I think, a little bit unexpected. And then they kind of took a tumble against the Orioles too in that big matchup. Now the Orioles are only two back here. How, how do you see that shaking out uh, down the stretch? Because 
I don't think the Red Sox are going to be there in, in a battle for the AL East down the stretch. It's They're just in way over their heads. They're, they're eight and a half back already. And I don't think the Yankees are going to slow down in a sense. I mean, they've, they've struggled a little bit lately, but they're still a very good baseball team. No, the Sox ceiling is definitely wild card. And I'm completely fine with it. The top of the AL East is going to be a lot of fun just because the Orioles have kind of flopped the last – last couple of series too. I think they just got swept by the Astros. I think it's going to be a lot of back and forth at the top between those two. Cause you know, I mean, Cole's back, but, you know, Rizzo's hurt, Verdugo's gone cold, like stuff can go up and down for them. Injuries happen. You never know. I, I, as a Red Sox fan, I would prefer the Orioles pull out that division. I mean, Soto and judge are on their own can carry a team. I'm, I'm just looking forward to watching that. Hopefully the uh, Blue Jays and Rays can play a little spoiler down down the stretch. I know that they at least matches up with each other a lot in September at the end of the year. But uh, I'm, I'm going to stand strong with my pick for the Orioles to win the division, but I think it can go either way. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna hang with the Orioles, too. I just don't want to – I mean, listen, they're the Yankees – we do the same thing every year. That they think they're gonna, you know, go far, and then they just don't because they're the Yankees. Uh, but do we ever want to risk it? Do we ever want to risk having to watch them win a twenty eighth title? Of course not. It'd be ridiculous. Even though most, I think, like twenty of them came before segregation in major or the Civil Rights Act in Major League Baseball. You know, uh, in the Central, again, kind of a battle of the shit as as it kind of normally is. Um, although the guardians are hot, uh, I'll say that, uh, Stephen Kwan, right. Am I right about that? Stephen Kwan has been, I mean, he's flirting with 400, <laughs> which is, you know, that that's pretty fucking good. I, I'll say that. I mean, if you're flirting with Ted Williams, then that's, there, that's nothing to tip your hat at, or uh, that is something to tip your hat at. So give me, give me a little insight on the guardians, not the Indians. The guardians have just been weird. I mean, yeah. They don't have many guys that, that you'll look at and be, I know that, I recognize that name. I, I've heard of this guy the last couple of years. He's very good. But they they just win ball games. They'll find any way. Their their pitching's been solid. I say he's the best closer in baseball. Josh Naylor should be the all-star game starter at first base. He just hit his 20th home run last night or the night before. And then Jose Ramirez is, Jose Ramirez is the best third baseman in baseball. And, but then it's just these guys that, you know, you've maybe heard of down the line with former teams, but but they're scrappy. They manufacture runs. They find ways to win games. Their pitching keeps them in in every game. Is it sustainable? I don't know because you know this, I talk about Judge and Soto carrying a team. I don't know how much during a season that Jose Ramirez and Josh Naylor can do that. Um, my, my pick for the Central was completely wrong. Uh, I had the Tigers. I like the Tigers. And it's not working out too hot. Tarek Schubel's probably the best pitcher in the NHL, honestly. But the Central's been weird for me. They've, they've been a lot better than expected, but also at the same time worse than expected, if that even makes sense. Yeah, the Royals have kind of tumbled a little bit. They're 3-7 and seven in their last 10. Um, and then the Twins have kind of jumped them. But it's, it's still very – I mean, it's still a battle there. I, I think it's – I don't care how much the Guardians are up right now. They, they definitely seem like a team that on the, you know, the flip of a switch, they can tumble again, and it's going to be a tight battle in September. So this one would really be too close to call. There, there's no real bit, except for the White Sox. The White Sox are out of it. There's no chance that they will do anything this year, uh, which what, what the fuck? What is going on over in Chicago? I mean, the rebuild was like three years ago, and then uh, it, was, it was thought that they would win a World Series within the next five years and then just... Just like that, it's over. Yeah, three, four years ago, they had that core. They had the Luis Robert, they had Eloy, they had Tim Anderson, they had Dylan Cease, Lucas Giolito. They had a lot of really fun guys. <laughs> I mean, Robert is the only one still left, I think, right? He, and well, Eloy's there, but he's hurt all the time. It's, everyone thought they were going to have that, that superstar team. They signed Yasmani Grandal to a big contract. Andrew Benintendi to a big contract. Everyone thought they were going. Literally the biggest contract in White Sox history. And those, both of those two. Yeah, Benintendi <laughs> and Grandal were the two highest contracts in history. And everyone's saying, oh, the White Sox are going for it with this young court. I don't know if it's the blame on ownership, on coaching, on I don't know, the GM, the owner. They're just 
and I don't see any world where they're good in the next four or five years. I hope they prove me wrong because they're the White Sox fans are a lot of a lot of fun. They're they're wild on the, on those games when they're good. So that that would be a fun one. Yeah. All right. Into the West. So the Seattle Mariners are leading the Na- uh, American League West, which I think is a little bit of shock, but. It looks like the Astros are trying to get back to level. Basically, they, they had that really tough start in April, and they're starting to find their footing a little more. Uh, Texas, again, I, I don't know. I don't know how people were feeling about Texas. You know, at the beginning of the season, I was high on them. Uh, I think they're the, the World Series champions are going to be high on. Um, but it's also, again, very hard to keep up kind of the pace that they were at. Uh, I, I would see a Houston resurgence. I, I feel like. Houston always knows how to play late in the year. You know, they, they're they great in, in August, September, October. I feel like maybe Houston will just sneak up on Seattle, and this will just be another one of those years where we're like, man, Seattle fucking collapsed again. Like, they, they were just expected to do something, and they didn't, like, every single year before. Yeah, I, I think this division's very much not over. Uh, it, whether it's the Astros or the Rangers, I think they'll – one of these teams, if not both, are going to pass the Mariners. Mariners have good, good starting pitching, kind of shaky, and and I mean they finally got Julio Rodriguez going a little bit. He's been terrible for most of the year, and the fact that they're in first place with him doing as poorly as he's been is honestly impressive. But the Astros are getting guys back; their pitching staff starting to get healthy. The Rangers are getting their pitching staff back. Scherzer just came back, I think, yesterday, and that. They should be getting the ground back in the next next two months. Should be just in time for. They'll, they'll get him back for like three days. And that's, yeah, that's assuming he stays healthy when he does come back. But I hope he does because that rotation would be disgusting if all those guys are healthy. But yeah, the Astros and Rangers are getting guys back. The Mariners are. I don't see them hanging in it and making a big playoff push. They'll probably stay in it until the last month of the season, but. Um, the, the the pitching is great. The rest of the team is kind of sketchy. I don't I don't feel good about the Mariners, to be honest. Yeah, it looks like Texas. They'll be getting Evan Carter back soon. He's on the ten day IL. Yeah, so not not great for for Texas, I guess. But if they if they can keep adding those pieces, and of course Scherzer will get more comfortable as the season goes on. You know, we could see another late Texas run to the National League. I've been hearing a lot of anti Phillies. The, explain the Phillies to me because I know they're beating a lot of bad teams, but they're still, I mean, they're, they're 52 and 26. Like, can you apologize for being 52 and 26? No, you can't. And I, I mean, I, I get the hate on Twitter. It's shit talking. It's whatever. But I mean, you, you're supposed to beat the teams that you're supposed to beat and then play 500 against the teams that, you know, you, you might match up a little, a little worse against I mean, the Phillies are just a bunch of white boys that hit bombs. They've, they've got Schwarber going. Yeah, I think he's top 10, top 15 in the league in homers. Castellanos is getting hot. Uh, yeah, speaking of Nick Castellanos, he had a home run, or he had a walk-off hit on the night Willie Mays died. So he seriously is addicted to awkward moments where he does good. Piece, yeah, that- <laughs> They're ridiculous. I mean, still hilarious. But yeah, the Phillies don't apologize for, for being good. They should never apologize for being good. We'll see how they do come, you know, the important times, though. Uh, the Braves are, again, they're, they're kind of finding their footing again. It seems like those really good teams kind of got off to a late st- or a slower start because, you know, I, I know Braves fans were freaking out. They weren't in first place again this year, which you're not going to be good every year, right? <laughs> I mean, I th- the Braves are we're overreacting, to be honest. I mean... They they didn't have their their big guys hitting. I mean, I guess it's a it's a freak out moment when you lose a Cooney, obviously. But yeah, but you got you got Michael Harris going a little bit. Austin Riley's finally raking. If I'm not worried about the Braves. I've, everyone had these high expectations for them, and then they're freaking out when they're not on a 110 win pace. I still think the Braves have a shot at the division because I mean we've heard this story before. Braves Braves are down a little bit, a couple games to in the NL East, and then they're right back on top in a couple of weeks. So I'm not counting out the Braves on the division just yet. Yeah. Um, the Nationals are a nice little surprise, though. Uh, sitting at 38 and 40, Davey Martinez has them has them cooking. Yeah, I, 
I didn't I didn't expect a lot from the Nationals going in. I didn't think they were going to be absolutely horrendous. Uh, I didn't think they would be towing 500 ball. But it, they've had a lot of a couple of their guys going. C.J. Abrams has been incredible for them this year. I I think if it weren't for a couple big names in the NL, uh, he'd be he'd be going for the All Star game. But um, not not a whole lot on the Nationals. I think they'll they'll just be okay for this year. The the NL East is just a two horse race, to be honest. Yeah. Um, into the Central. First off, the Cubs. What a collapse! My God, like what happened to the Chicago Cubs? The Pirates, I mean, well, I, I got to talk about Paul Skeens. We haven't even touched on him. Is this is this guy just Superman on the mound? I mean, Jesus Christ, I feel like every single time I see a stat line from him, it's Paul Skeens went seven innings, zero runs, struck out 15, and he had like eight or nine 100-mile-an-hour fastballs in the sixth and seventh inning. I mean, yeah, he's an all-star. That's, that's He's going to be an all-star as a rookie. He's going to be the rookie of the year. And mm-hmm. he's much must watch television. He's a top ten pitcher in the league already. I'd say I don't think that's a crazy take. And he's got he's got more than just Pirates fans tuning in for every single one of his starts. He's becoming Strasburg esque, mm-hmm. and it's been a lot of fun to watch him go to work with with Jared Jones, who's a lot of fun to watch. Mitch Keller is a lot of fun to watch. I really like the Pirates, uh, especially their pitching. I think they need to go out and get a bat or two at the deadline, and 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 then they might be into something because this NL Central's up for grabs. The last place team, the Cubs, nine games back. It's it's not crazy to say that that one of these teams under the Brewers is gonna is gonna make a run and win this division. Yeah, if if the Cubs were in the West, they would be a game back of Arizona right now, but a game ish back. So 37 and 42, Arizona's 38, or they would be tied with San Francisco, I guess. But yeah, it's a close, it's a tight race right now. And I think the wild card race there in the National League, you have the Cubs are, <laughs> they're third to last, and they're three games back of a wild card spot right now. Like yeah, it is a wild card tight. Race is a joke. It is, it is tight going into the National League. In comparison, the Tampa Bay Rays are second outside the bubble and they're four games back of the Boston Red Sox. So like wh- whatever's going on in the national league, I love it. I love parody. I love craziness. I, I think in 2018, there was like three game one sixty threes in the national league to decide all, all that shit. It was, there was a ton of ties. I know the reds were involved, but yeah, I'm, I'm ex you know, I'm excited to watch that down the stretch. The St. Louis Cardinals, they were they were horrible, horrible last year, and I don't think a lot of people had too many expectations for them. Um, but they've figured it out. They're they're I mean they're in second place. They're five games back of first right now. They could be in striking distance as well. Yeah, I think the big thing has been Goldie. Uh, he he was, I think in late May by then he was hitting two twenty with two homers, and he's he hasn't been hurt. He's been playing every game, and it was time to freak out because it's like oh that's one of our two good, really good hitters, uh, but he's he's started to figure out he's not he's not looking like himself yet. But uh, I think he's up to two forty, two fifty with seven or eight homers. So he's starting to swing it. Um, they need to get Arenado going back to Arenado's way. Mason Wynn's been pretty good for them at short, and their pitching staff's been good enough. Sonny Gray has been a phenomenal signing for them, but every, other than that, everything everyone's just been all right. I mean, they've mm-hmm. done enough to get by. Uh, they're not as bad as as they were last year, so hopefully, I, I I I'm rooting for the Cardinals. I like that pitching staff a lot, but I I I'd, I'd, I'd like to see them be one of the teams that that kind of makes a run at this division at the end of the year. Yeah, it's gonna. I mean, I think everyone's gonna try and make some sort of run because Milwaukee doesn't. I don't know. There's something about Milwaukee. They just don't really feel like they should be there. I mean, obviously they're you know they're in first place for a reason, but it's like okay, this isn't gonna be for long. I, I kind of feel like they're gonna they're gonna let it get really really close towards the end there. Um, what what do you think? Yeah, I think for sure. I, I, I don't trust the Brewers pitching staff like I used to. I mean that that was probably due to do uh, Corbin Burns anchoring the rotation for the last few years, and I don't I don't like the whole uh, they can just trade their best 
best pitcher away like that and, and be completely fine. I mean, it, it's baseball. I just don't, I don't, I don't love the narrative that that creates. Is it like, oh, these guys are completely fine. I mean, the guys they got in, back in that trade, they've, they've contributed this year. DL Hall has been, I think he was all right for his first couple starts. But uh, Joey Ortiz is an All Star candidate. I just voted for him for my for NL third base for the All Star game. I think he's been great. Uh, Willie Adams has been good for them, but. I, mean, I think they're a lot like the Guardians in terms of, like, you haven't heard of a ton of their guys. They've got a couple of big names, but I mean, Yelich, Adamas, Freddie Peralta, but they're scrappy. They're they're fun to watch. Um, Freddie Peralta's really good. Uh, I, I'm excited for Devin Williams to get back, um, really bolster that bullpen. But it's it's kind of the, the same story as the Cardinals, the Reds, the Pirates, the Cubs. I could see them – finishing at the top of this division at the end of the year. It's just up for grabs because it's a lot of these teams that it's it's going to be who gets hot at the end of the year. And then the West. The Dodgers are just kind of, they're doing what they're supposed to do. They're, it doesn't really seem like there's all that much distraction. Now, I know losing Mookie is going to be tough for them. That's not easy to lose, you know, probably your second second or third best player on the team which also it's crazy that Mookie Betts is the second or third best player on that team. But the Dodgers are kind of just doing what they're supposed to do. They they have a comfortable lead right now. Obviously, it's not something you want to have for the rest of the year. But um, is, is there any chance we'll see a Padres or, or the Diamondbacks come in and take that division? They really go on a run? No, I don't, I don't see a chance. <laughs> the Dodgers could struggle a little bit. They they I mean they lose Mookie. I don't think he's out for the year, right? I think he's. I don't think so. Six six weeks, I think I saw, but I'm not 100 percent sure. But I mean, you got Freddie and Otani in the middle of that lineup with with Glass now, and and Walker Bueller's finally getting going. He's back. Gavin Stone's been really good for them. Their pitching's a lot of fun. Oh, and Clayton Kershaw is on a rehab assignment the next couple of weeks. So they're going to get him back at some point is I, I, I don't care what the NL West does the rest of the division. It's the Dodgers division and it's, that's it. The Diamondbacks might make a run and, and keep it within 10 games at, in the last, in the last couple of weeks of the year. But I, other than that, I don't, I don't think anyone's coming close. So eight, I think in June, eight and a half being back, like being back eight and a half games, isn't awful. Like, it's not like something that's insurmountable, but if you look at their run differential, like that's, I, I think that's a big tell that the, the Dodgers are a hundred runs ahead of the Padres in run differential. And although they're only eight and a half games up, a hundred runs is crazy to me. That That's basically just a little over 10 runs per game back. If you want to like go through the math, I don't, I don't know how much, but I just, I think people like, you need to hear that number. That is a crazy number just for run. That means the, the Dodgers are winning their ba- their games. Like they are crushing teams in their games. If you look at teams with like a similar record, um, like the Phillies are there, but again, they've been playing those really shitty teams that, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how much you want to say or not say about it. Um, but teams like the Yankees, I guess they're kind of hanging around then. I guess it's not that crazy, but still, the the difference when you look at it is crazy to me. Yeah, the Padres. I mean, the Padres are eight and a half games back, but they've had everyone healthy besides Bogarts and uh, I think Darvish. But Darvish's IL stint just got pushed back. Bogarts is still out for maybe the whole year. They just lost Tatis. He just went on the IL. And I uh, believe they have Joe Musgrove on the aisle and Campy Sano, their catcher as well. So they're, they're they're dealing with injuries right now. I mean, I get the Dodgers are too with Mookie, but when the Padres are losing that many pieces and they've got that many pieces out for that long, I think I, I, I don't see a, a world where they really make anything close in this division. But yeah, that run, the run differential is just crazy. It's, it's, it's the Dodgers just beating the crap out of teams. They're, they're it's. And They're if doing you doing what we expected them to do this year. Yeah. If you look at the first, like the other divisions and the first and second place comparison, you have the Braves who are at plus 49 versus the Phillies who are at plus 121. I mean, that's that's a big number, but it's not 100 runs. Milwaukee and St. Louis, plus 66 to minus 30, although the central division 
I don't like to count the Central Division in for anything. It doesn't matter. Like when you look at numbers, you want to compare numbers. Central Division is just too hard. It's the shit mountain where it's like, okay, these numbers could be inflated or deflated because they're beating up on each other. Again, they're just not very good. Uh, Yankees and Orioles, they're right there. Their run differentials are within two, and the Orioles actually lead in run differential. And even the Red Sox in third place are plus 49, and they're closer to first place. And then you look at the West, first and second place, are right. they're right there in run differential. Even third place is right there in run differential. So I, some, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not the end-all, be-all thing, but I think it's just something interesting um, to look at. And you're also, you're because I, you can clearly tell I'm very behind on baseball. You're helping me catch up a little bit as well because um, I've definitely been a little more behind the past six weeks. Is Jackson Holiday a bust? Are we officially ready to declare him a bust? No, <laughs> no, not even close. The guy's got what fifty major league at bats. Uh, no, give give him some more time. I don't know what specifically he needs to work on. I I didn't understand any of the any of the uh, ins and outs of hitting. Uh, but whatever it is he needs to work on, I'm sure he'll work on it. Whether it be this year, the off season, whatever. His dad's a big leaguer. His dad, his dad's Matt Holiday. It, if anyone can fix him, it, his dad can. <laughs> the, the 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 coaching and the factory that they've got in in the Baltimore uh, development system, I'm I, I have no doubt that he's going to be just fine. And he's not going to be the rookie of the year this year, probably. But no, nah, give it a couple more years before I start throwing the B word around. Well, whatever the O's got going on over there is crazy. The, all their all their young prospects look exactly alike. Like they just cloned them and gave them a different name. But I I just love hearing the bust discourse. Not even a full season into this guy's career, like he he has again fifty games under his belt, and we're already like, all right, he's a bust. Get get his ass out of here. He's done. His top whatever. That that's just crazy to me. But again, people are prisoners of the moment. They don't. They don't see past the, I don't know, 100 games after this. Like, he could have turned it on. Um, he is back in the lineup with AAA Norfolk as well. He did have an, an elbow injury. I will say, he looked too young. Just just on his look. He looked a little too young to play Major League Baseball, in my eyes. Just, he has a very baby face. You know, like Devers when Devers won the World Series with us. Very baby faced. Oh, yeah. I was like, this guy should not be, this guy shouldn't be here. He should be eating his fucking ice cream, at, you know, <laughs> at the ice yeah. cream truck outside the stadium. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, Jackson Holiday is married and he looks 15 years old. Yeah, he looks, yeah, which, I mean, listen, good for him. Like, he found a wife, he loves his wife, um, but he does look 15. But I don't know, I think I think there's, that, that should almost be a compliment for him. We're just saying he looks young and he's very, very successful at a young age. And then Fanatics, we did it. Also, uh, I think about six weeks ago, right when we went on the hiatus, Addicts did announce, or Major League Baseball really announced, that they would be replacing the jerseys and the pants within the next, you know, by the end of the season or at the start of next season. So we did it. We bullied Major League Baseball into actually doing something. So congratulations to the internet, I guess. Clap, clap it up for the internet for bullying someone into submission. Congrats. I, mean, I can't believe Major League Baseball is going to have Major League quality uniforms. It's really a great day for the sport. It It is crazy to me that that was like how low quality of of merchandise that they were putting out. And, and I think they're still putting out the horrible quality merchandise. So that's not going to change. They're just like, we just got to make it look better on the field to trick you into, you know, buying our shitty merch. But I've already, my, part of my birthday gift, because my birthday is on Saturday, I told my girlfriend... I want to go shopping on Ally Express, and I'm just going to pick out a bunch of jerseys. I'm going to get a bunch of Red Sox and Colts and Celtics and Bruins jerseys, and I'm just going. To, that's my birthday gift, and it's super cheap too. Yeah, get some get some good Fanatics MLB jerseys while they're still uh, still a thing. They're going to be limited edition soon. I, I have one Fanatics shirt from the Red Sox, and it is it's just like a jersey, but there's no name on the back, and it is. One of the weirdest fitting shirts I have. It it it's supposed to be a men's size, and it's built like a female shirt because female shirts are like tighter around the sleeves, and it's a shorter sleeve. It's built like that. It's not really my favorite Red Sox shirt, so it's you know a little disappointing. But it's Fanatics, so I also got it like five years ago before Fanatics really went down the went down the tubes. Let's do 
let's let's do a little bit of overall surprises and disappointments for the season, and then we'll do a uh, I guess MVP, LVP, and Cy Young for the first half. All right. Uh, I mean, my surprise was Duran, but I kind of already covered him. Just kind of scroll on some guys. I actually will stay with my Red Sox homerism, but in a different way. Uh, it's Chris Sale. Yeah. He's, he's been unreal. And, I'm and very he, happy for him. I, I'm so happy for him. I mean, I'm 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 very upset that we traded him, but <laughs> who knows if he has the same success staying in Boston? He's got a 2.8 WAR already as 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 a pitcher. I mean, he's top 25 in the league in WAR. The ZRA is still under three. He's throwing 96, 97, 98. He's looking almost like the sale of old, not quite, but I'm, he's he's also learning how to pitch uh, differently with a, with a lower lower velocity, which he's kind of he kind of learned to do in Boston when he was actually on the mound, but fully on the mound. It's nice to see him actually get to get to go to work and and be the Chris, somewhat of the Chris Sale of old. I don't think anyone saw a fully healthy season looking like this from him so far. Uh, so he, he he he'll be my surprise, my biggest surprise outside of Jaron Duran. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy for him. Uh, I don't think it would have happened in Boston. I, I think in Boston, there even going into this season before we knew he was being traded. No, although some people had speculation, there was way too much pressure on him to succeed. Chris Sale has been for the last really ever since he got you know initially really hurt um, after 2018. He has been like the savior. He has been the guy where it's like, oh, he has to. Once Chris Sale comes back, then we go. And I think some of, sometimes that pressure can really take a toll on you mentally and physically. And when you're trying to come back from an injury, that's just it's difficult. I think that is what he needed, where he didn't need to be the savior. He didn't need to be the guy that comes in and saves the season. Rather, they told him, get healthy, get your way, like figure it out. You know, I we trust you type of thing. I respect the Atlanta Braves for that. It wasn't going to happen in Boston. I am equally as sad that he's doing that there and not for us as I am happy that he's doing that there. Like, I'm very, you know, he's he's spoken about his time with the Red Sox. Red Sox fans consider it a failure when he was here. I would much rather have what we had from Chris Sale than what we did from Yohan Moncada or what the White Sox got from Yohan Moncada. I promise you that. He was a, he would have been, I mean, he was a third baseman with us. He would have been taking Rafi's spot. I would much rather have Devers over Moncada. If we had a first baseman, I'd much rather have Casas over Moncada. Like, or, or Mitch Moreland in 2018 over, over Moncada. Like there's plenty of guys I would take over Moncada. Chris Sale was, I mean, he was unstoppable in 2017. Won a World Series for us in 2018. If he didn't pitch a single inning. I would have honestly been perfectly fine with it. I would have been like, you know what? It sucks. We didn't get more from him after that. Breaking news, Raphael Devers just hit a monster bomb. Yeah, and I bet on it. Uh, and, and, oh, Caleb, Caleb wins his bet. But, yeah, I'm happy for Chris Sale, basically. That's that's all I had to say. I'm very happy for Chris Sale. I'm going to go – I mentioned him earlier. I'm going to go Hauk. Hauk is my biggest surprise, um, just based off of how last year really ended for him and, and how he's pitched over the past, you know, couple of years and – we saw it building, and then it fell off, and now this year he's, again, he is Chris Sale 2.0. He is the right-handed Chris Sale. Um, so I'm very happy for Hauk, too. He seems like a you know a very humble guy. seems like he just enjoys the process. So um, I'll give it to him. Who, who's your biggest disappointment? Going to go with uh, the entirety of the Toronto Blue Jays. That's uh, pretty fair. If this was a couple weeks ago, I would specifically point out Vladdy Jr., but he's been – He's been hitting lately, uh, but it's been a lot on Bichette, uh, a lot on Springer, a lot on Gossman. Uh, those guys that were kind of expected to take another step and, and lead the Blue Jays back in the playoffs, and they've just kind of been eh. Springer's been non-existent. Uh, the guy's 34, 33, playing like a 45-year-old. Uh, everyone was waiting for the, the year that this Blue Jays team just beat the shit out of everybody, and it just didn't happen. And it's been really uh, disappointing for the last, like, three years. Three, mm -hmm. four years. I mean, they made the playoffs once, maybe twice in that span. But that core of of, of MLB player sons, you know, Vlad, Biggio, Bichette, everyone was just waiting for them to explode. And they, they're now at the pit of the AL East and doesn't look good for them considering 
uh, the last couple of weeks. And I think they're on a six, seven game losing streak and now down two nothing to the Red Sox as we speak. So, uh, yeah, I think baseball is very, baseball is a lot better when the Jays are good. I think that's yeah, pretty fair to say. It's, it's pretty cool to have a, a Canadian representative team going up and, and, and holding their own in, in the, against the U S uh, all the teams in the U S the big money teams. Um, and in a whole fan base Canada behind them, uh, so their playoff yeah. games are a lot of fun to watch. I mean, ne- never forget, never forget them against the Rangers a few years. What was that? Twenty fourteen? Am I right about that, or was that twenty fifteen? It was either fourteen or fifteen. I can't remember. It was one of those. And yeah, they're just that <laughs> that Jose Batista home run. I mean, no one. I don't think any baseball fan will ever forget where they were at when that home run happened. And I'm pretty sure that was a day game. Too. That was a day playoff game. I, like I was early, a- early afternoon, like yeah. one o'clock game. Yeah, I had like just gotten home from school. I remember watching like the end of the game. That was a, I'll never forget that one. That was awesome. I'm gonna go with my biggest disappointment. I don't know. I don't know if we can qualify it as a disappointment or more just like a shock. It is just how bad Javi Baez is at hitting. I mean, he is so fucking horrible. He has a negative 1.4 war. He's batting under 200. And how much money did he get from Detroit? An ungodly amount. The I mean, same amount of money that the Red Sox gave Trevor Story. Well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it was too much. It was still too much. And he just completely fleeced the Detroit Tigers. Completely fleeced them. I'm not really a big fan of the Tigers. You know, I, I think I have some some hatred for them following the 2013 ALCS, even though we did win that series. Um, but I still have, I'm harboring a little bit of hatred, but yeah, I just, ugh, I, I cannot stand them. And especially seeing Javi Baez, I mean, it makes me smile a little bit. Um, I don't love watching guys struggle, but it's, it's the Tigers. I'm happy to see it. Uh, all right. Oh, where, where's, uh, I guess, who's your MVP so far? I hate to say it, but I think it's Judge. I mean, he's... He started the year off horrible. I think his OPS was like 650 through the first like three weeks. I was clowning him on Twitter along with others, but yeah, it's it's at least in the the American League. But if it like overall in the MLB, I'd still think it's Judge He's second in the league in WAR behind Gunnar Henderson. But he's got I think 28 homers. He's hitting. He's got over 1,000 OPS. I mean, he's just doing judge things. I'm, I have I have notifications on for the MLB home run account on Twitter, and mm-hmm. I'm starting to get sick of seeing judges' name popping up every single day. I, I think it's going to be a tight race for, with him and his own teammate <laughs> for the MVP. <laughs> but I, as of right now, I'm giving it to Judge. Yeah, I wanted to give it to Gunnar Henderson, but Judge is just on another planet right now again. Although. We are not cutting away from sporting events to watch him chase the American League home run record. We're not doing that again. I don't why we ever did that in the first place was ridiculous. It's the American League home run record. Okay. It is not even the full major league home run record. What are we doing? It's, it's seventh. It's the seventh most in the season. Yeah. That's that is like the cra- we are not getting excited for seventh. Okay. We are not the participation. We don't want participation trophies here. I guarantee you Aaron Judge was probably a little bit like, uh, like I don't really want you guys to cover this as much as we're covering it. The only reason was because it was a Yankee. I'm confident in saying that. The only reason is because it was a Yankee. Nobody else gave a shit except for like ESPN. And I'm pretty sure Major League Baseball came out and said they juiced those balls anyways, which is – yeah doesn't really get enough attention as it is that they juice the balls for his home run race. And yet Barry Bonds is still given shit for, for his home run record. I mean, come on. Yeah. And then I, we get to yeah. see Roger Maris's son trotted out there for no reason. Brock Holtz trotting out there, his, <laughs> his home run record, you know, <laughs> the Brock Holt had tears in his eyes watching Aaron judge go after the American league home run record. Um, shout out, shout out to 10 or yeah. really it was, uh, at, at that time, it was the other one. That was, I can't that was even named, remember. That was name redacted. Name redacted. Yeah. yeah Shout out name redacted. Brock. Brock said he would he would sign with the Yankees and break Judge's home run record. That was a great that was a great moment in the pod. Never forget him have, having the cycle in the playoffs against the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. Never forget that. Oh, um, Brock Holt. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I'm sticking with my MVP with Judge. Sad enough, you know, uh, he deserves it after Altuve. I, I think he does deserve it a little bit too. Um, so, yeah. Uh, most, what, what was my next one? What was it, LVP? I feel like LVP, most disappointing. I don't know, who's the LVP? If you're, if you're giving me, oh, I, it's, I mean, it's, it's Javi Baez, but I'm going to have some fun and say Corbin Carroll. Just because he he was the big piece of this Diamondbacks team that was supposed to that was supposed to lead them. I mean, they made it to the World Series last year, and and uh, they were supposed to build on that this year. They added to their rotation. They added a couple bats, and then uh, I mean, they're playing 500 ball, and I think a big reason for that is Corbin Carroll just being, eh, he's he's. I don't even know how to describe it. He's just been upsetting. He was a fun player to watch last year. The dude flies around the bases. He, I think he had 20 homers mm-hmm. last year. If he didn't, he was close to it. Uh, so I, I hope he gets it going. I like the Diamondbacks. I, I I like Corbin Carroll. He's a fun player to watch. But his his absence has definitely been, been felt by the Diamondbacks. He doesn't. So you said Javi Baez. Javi Baez doesn't even show up on ESPN under MLB player batting stats for at least for average. So maybe he hasn't, has he been hurt a lot this year? Honestly, I haven't kept up with, with his. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think anyone's, oh, he's on the 10 day IL right now. So he must be, how many at-bats does he have? Let's see. He's only, he's played 53 games. He has 186 at-bats. So it's not like it's like he hasn't played at all. Okay. Anyways, Caleb did have an issue, Nicholas, you, so I'm just going to finish out the show. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We are officially back on Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m., but we did take that six-week hiatus just because of uh, the chaotically intolerant table tennis league. Go check out all the games. I'm going to have better presented games going up as actual YouTube videos, um, different angles and stuff as well. And then Summer Smash, the documentary, will be dropping on um, the 8th, August 8th, 2024. That's a Thursday night right before the NFL season gets going. Um, But we're going to be dropping Summer Smash then. So make sure to check that out. Make sure to go like, subscribe, comment, the whole thing. And we will see you next Wednesday.